Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's video, it's going to be kind of lengthy. We're going to go through every single Senate battle here, looking at how the Cook Political Report has rated these different races. You can see here going into the 2018 midterms, the Democrats have 23 seats that aren't up for election. The Republicans at 42, which means the Democrats have a lot more seats that they are trying to hold on to. They have 26 seats that they're trying to retain in comparison to the Republicans who are only defending nine Senate seats. So what I'm going to do is go through here and give what the Cook Political Report has in terms of the rating for these races. And there are some here and there that I disagree with. And I'm going to change how the map looks slightly based on uh, the data that I see for these particular races. And then after that, the ones that we have in the toss-up section, I'm going to go through and fill out at the end. So you can see how I see this map playing out at the end of the day once we get into these midterm elections. So starting off here, I don't have any disagreements with the Cook Political Report in terms of their solid Democratic seats or their solid Republican seats. So first, I'm going to go through the solid Democratic seats, and that's going to get us already to a pretty close result here in comparison to the Democrats now being down by 19 seats. After we go through these solid Democratic seats, it's going to be a lot closer uh, than that. So starting off here in California, that's of course going to be blue because they have two Democrats running against each other here in California. And then moving on, Connecticut, Murphy, the incumbent, very safe seat. And a lot of these East Coast states have incumbents running that are extremely safe seats. And we're going to be going through those. So also Delaware with Carper. He's got an interesting challenge in his primary, but no matter who wins that Democratic primary result, that's also going to be a, more than likely a solid Democratic seat. And then moving on to Hawaii, a very liberal state there. They have the incumbent, again, going to be a solid blue. Moving on to Massachusetts with Elizabeth Warren, of course, that is also going to be a safe blue. And then next with Maryland, another one of those eastern states there with an incumbent running, that's going to be safe blue. And now we go up to Maine, and that's a little bit more interesting because it's the independent Angus King, but he caucuses with the Democrats. He's very popular over there in his home state, and he's looking to go ahead and continue to be the senator representing the state of Maine. Moving on to Minnesota with Klobuchar. She's been getting a little bit more nationally recognized, I'd say, over the last couple of years, the incumbent from Minnesota, and Minnesota being one of the more blue Midwestern states, other than maybe Illinois, is probably the only more Democratic state than Minnesota. That's going to be a safe blue result. And then moving on to New Mexico, a state whose demographics is making it even more Democratic. And we've been seeing that in those statewide elections there in New Mexico. Also the incumbency advantage. Moving on to New York, Gillibrand, another incumbent senator who probably has aspirations to go on and continue to get more name recognition, maybe running for president one day. We'll see how that shakes out, but very safe for her to win over there in New York. And another East Coast state there, Rhode Island, and an incumbent with Sheldon Whitehouse. Virginia with Tim Kaine, the 2016 Democratic vice president uh, nominee running there and the incumbent very safe for the Democrats. And then moving on, of course, one of the safest seats probably in the entire Senate here is Vermont with Bernie Sanders. No doubt he's going to go on and win that one. And of course, Bernie Sanders in the Democratic leadership in the Senate, and he also caucuses with the Democrats as an independent and Washington out on the West coast, another incumbency advantage there with Cantwell looking like a safe blue result. Now moving on, I'm going to actually go down and do the likely Republicans because, or excuse me, the solid Republicans because I don't have any disagreements with these either. The incumbent down in Mississippi with Wicker, that's going to be a safe Republican result. And then Mitt Romney in Utah, no doubt he's going to win that one, as well as the incumbent from Wyoming going to take that one here almost certainly as well. So now we're going to move back up here to the Democrat side and look at the likely Democrat seats. There is one result in here that I have a disagreement with, and I'll start with that, actually. It's Montana with Tester. He's very popular in his home state, but Montana, Donald Trump did very well there. It tends to lean in a more Republican direction, but Tester, like I said, he is popular there. He's more of a moderate, and that name recognition certainly helps him. I'm going to put it in a lean Democrat direction, though. Uh, away from a likely Democrat. I just see this as being a pretty competitive result. Tester has the advantage, but it's not going to be a free race, certainly, for him. So I'm going I'm to at least put that one there. 
uh, as one disagreement that I have with the Cook Political Report. And now moving on to these Midwestern states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, all of them having incumbents, all of them polling pretty well. They've shown that they can win statewide elections in these states. And what is looking like a good year for Democratic voter turnout, that's only going to help their causes. One step down from solid Democrats because these states, in terms of their numbers, they don't overwhelmingly go for Democrats like all of those solid Democratic states that we already put on the board. Uh, but I don't have disagreements with them being in the likely Democratic camp either. So that's how we're going to put those on the Democrat side. And then also New Jersey with Menendez. This would probably be a solid Democrat seat if Menendez wasn't such a terrible candidate. His perceived corruption is definitely hurting his numbers. We saw a poll out recently that had that race very close, maybe even putting this one down in a lean Democratic direction. But I'd really like to see some more polling data before fully moving it over into a lean Democrat. So we're going to keep it at a likely Democrat scenario there in New Jersey. And now we're going to move down to the lean Democrats where I have disagreements. First and foremost, Ohio with Sherrod Brown. He is absolutely killing it in the polling that we've been seeing. He's very popular in his home state of Ohio. One of the more progressive senators that we have on the Democratic side. I'd almost, you could almost make a case you could put this in a solid Democrat direction. But the fact that it is Ohio here in the Midwest, they're putting it down in a lean Democrat. I just don't see how they're making that based on the polling results that we've been seeing. So that's another disagreement that I have here. Going to put it in the likely Democrat scenario. And then Minnesota, the special election. Again, Klobuchar, certainly safety because of her incumbency, makes it a little bit tougher here in the special election because you don't have that incumbency advantage with the Democrats. But again, I don't have too much disagreement with putting this in lean Democrat. You could probably make a pretty good case to side it with the likely Democrats, but we're going to keep it in the lean Democrat camp here for the time being until we get some more polling data on that one. Now we're going to move down to the toss-up Democrat seats. And I don't have too much disagreement with these other than West Virginia with Manchin. But first, we're going to start off with Florida and Nelson. The polling that we've been getting is basically a 50-50 between him and Rick Scott. And then also the same thing with Indiana. The polls have been very close. Missouri have been extremely close and North Dakota. All of those polling results have been extremely close. And what might lean this over to the Democrats at the end of the day and win them these seats is the fact that there's a lot more enthusiasm on the Democrats side going into these midterm elections. And that's going to help out a lot of these candidates that are in tough battles, especially because they have that incumbency advantage on top of it. But West Virginia, I don't see the reasoning why the Cook Political Report has Manchin in the toss-up section. The polls that we've been getting typically see him ahead by about 10 points or so. Even a Republican poll that came out more recently had Manchin ahead by 10 points, and that was in uh, a Republican poll, like I said. So I'd put this in the lean Democrat or even the likely Democrat scenario, but for the time being, putting it over in the lean Democrat, I think, is more than reasonable. I could even make a strong case, especially because Manchin, he's pretty popular in his home state of West Virginia. And people also forget that there's more registered Democrats in West Virginia than Republicans. And Manchin did very well in the primaries there in West Virginia, getting way more votes than anyone on uh, either side. He actually got more votes himself than the entire Republican primary and also doing really well against uh, his opponent that he had in his own primary. But Again, that's the only disagreement I have in the toss-up section with the Cook Political Report. All right, guys, so that puts us at 45-45. Now we're going down here. We'll start with the likely Republicans, and I don't have a disagreement with the special election down there in Mississippi. They don't have the incumbency advantage, but still Mississippi, a very red state, almost certainly going to be uh, a red result there. And then also Nebraska, I don't have too much disagreement with that one either being in the likely Republican direction. But then Ted Cruz, this is where I have a slight disagreement. The polling data between O'Rourke and Cruz tends to have Cruz ahead by about five to 10 points. The disadvantage for Cruz is that he has a negative approval rating in comparison to O'Rourke, whose favorabilities are very positive. The downside with O'Rourke is he doesn't have that overwhelming name recognition that Cruz has, but he's pretty close in the polls or certainly at least within striking distance. And the fact that he has very solid favorability numbers in comparison to Cruz at least gives him a chance if he continues to get his name out there more and if you get that strong Democratic turnout. 
and what's also helping O'Rourke in Texas because the demographics in the state are continuing to change. Maybe we're about 10 years or so away from Texas becoming an actual toss-up type state, but still for the time being, uh, O'Rourke, I think he can keep this close. If he gets it within five points, that would be an impressive result. And I wouldn't even put it out of the realm of possibility that he can go on and win this one. But for the time being, I'm going to be putting it in the lean Republican direction, one step down from where the Cook Political Report has this one. And now moving on over to the toss-up results. And this is where I have a number of disagreements, starting off with Arizona. Cinema is consistently ahead in the polls against any of the potential candidates that she's uh, pegged to be matched up against. Doesn't have to go against Jeff Flake, who's vacating this Senate seat, which also gives her a pretty good uh, shot because it is an open election scenario. I'm putting this one in the lean Democrat direction based on the polling results that we've been getting in this state here. And then moving on, uh, the next one I'm going to do is Nevada. Rosen versus Heller. Rosen already got about 10,000 more votes than Heller back in the primary, which is a great result there. Nevada, a state where Hillary Clinton was able to beat Donald Trump and one that the Democrats are certainly targeting as a great shot for them to pick up a Senate seat. And again, kind of a similar scenario, even though Nevada does have the incumbency advantage with Heller, the population center around Las Vegas is going to be a big swing for the Democrats here. And I would put this one again in the lean Democrat direction. The early polling data has shown Rosen with the advantage. And I feel like Uh, Putting it in the lean Democrat result right now isn't uh, completely out of the realm of reasonability. And then moving on here to Tennessee, again, all the polling data that we've been getting has shown uh, Bredesen ahead, very popular former governor from the state of Tennessee. And he's running against a Republican candidate who I don't think has quite the appeal and uh, especially with independence that Corker might have had another incumbent that's surrendering his Senate seat there. So an open race. Bredesen, when he went on and won his last election there in Tennessee, statewide election, he won every single county. The Republicans weren't even able to pick up one county in that governor's race. So Bredesen has a great shot at picking up this Senate seat. I put it in the lean Democrat direction as well, uh, similar to Arizona and Nevada. So that's going to wrap up all of the different leanings that I have. So that leaves us with four true toss-ups. That's going to be in Florida, Missouri, Indiana, and North Dakota. And as you can see here, very close, 48 seats on the Democrat side, 48 on the Republican side. And what's also helping the Democrats here is the fact that, of course, they were able to win that Alabama special election with Doug Jones, which is making things even one step um, better for them to try to reclaim control. So if this is the scenario and we go down to these four toss-ups, the Democrats would need to win three out of the four to get to that 51 seats needed to take control of the Senate. If it's a 50-50 tie, you can see here this little red VP. That would be Mike Pence who can break any 50-50 tie. So we're going to start here with Florida. We have Nelson and Scott. Both guys have really strong approval ratings in the state of Florida the incumbent, Bill Nelson, and the Republicans get a solid candidate here on the Republican side, especially in terms of name recognition. I have a hard time picking this one. With the polling that we've been seeing, it's been very close. Again, I see a difference maker in a number of these uh, 50-50 toss-up elections being Democratic voter turnout. We consistently see the Democrats are ahead of the Republicans in terms of enthusiasm at the highest level, usually by about 10 to 20 percentage points. I think that can have a real impact in a state like Florida. And as a result, again, I could see it almost going either way, but going to give the slight lean over to Bill Nelson right now. And kind of a similar thing over in the state of Missouri with McCaskill going against Holly. You have McCaskill, the incumbent advantage. She's been fundraising well. And also something that I think is going to hurt Republicans in Missouri is their governor who had to step down a Republican governor in a very shameful manner. I think that could have some people maybe having a little bit of Republican fatigue there in the state of Missouri. And with strong turnouts in population centers around St. Louis and Kansas City is going to help McCaskill out. She's been able to win these statewide elections, even without this huge advantage that the Democrats have in uh, that highest level of enthusiasm. So again, Even though the polling has been extremely close, just going to give a slight lean over to McCaskill, and that one could go either way. 
Now moving on to Indiana, and I think Donnelly's going to have a tough time here. You have Mike Pence from Indiana. He can come in and give Braun a lot of support. I think that has a lot of sway in a state like Indiana. And Indiana seems to be trending in a bit more Republican direction, uh, especially in terms of a lot of these other Midwestern states that we've been seeing. So I'm going to give the slight lean to Braun here. We had one poll come out least, uh, recently with Braun ahead by one point. The fact that he doesn't have the name recognition that Donnelly has, he's already doing pretty well in the polls. I think that's a good sign for him. So that puts us at 50 to 49, all coming down to height camp. And Heidkamp, she's been doing a really good job of fundraising. She has the incumbency advantage, and she has the name recognition advantage. But again, in a state that overwhelmingly went for Donald Trump, that's going to help Kramer out. The polling has been so close. I could see this one going either way, guys. It's so hard to make a prediction here in North Dakota. I can't wait to see what happens once we get to these November midterm elections with so many of these close results. But for the time being, until we get a little bit more polling data, just going to slightly put it over to the Republicans, put us at 50-50. I would not be surprised if this is what we end up seeing in the Senate after the midterm elections. Also, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Republicans be ahead by a seat or two or the Democrats be ahead by a seat or two. For the Democrats to win, they just need, in this scenario, to flip over either North Dakota, Indiana, or Texas, all of those within the realm of possibility, but not going to be easy for them. Democrats are going to have to have great turnout here if they're going to go ahead and take the Senate. The winning Congress looks much more doable for the Democrats, but the Senate is going to be a little bit of a tougher task. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this video, guys. Went through how the Cook Political Report has all of these different Senate seats rated and some disagreements that I had with some of their different ratings. But again, if you want more of this content, you can subscribe. Leave a comment down on how you think things are going to shake out. And also check out all of our prediction videos over on our YouTube channel. So thanks, guys, for stopping on in. Hope to see you back here for future videos. Bye.